In the bustling heart of the ancient world, before the illustrious reign of Augustus, lay the city of Rome, a place teeming with life, ambition, and an intriguing blend of order and chaos. Imagine walking through the crowded streets, where the clamor of market vendors blends with the eloquent speeches of aspiring politicians in the forum. Picture the grandeur of the Republic, a time when Rome was not yet an empire but a powerful city-state, governed by the Senate, a place where power was a game played by the elite. Can you envision the patricians, Rome's noble class, draped in togas, discussing politics, philosophy, and the latest plays, while in the same city, the plebeians, the common folk, hustled to earn their daily bread? Their lives were a constant struggle, yet they were the backbone of Roman society, serving as soldiers, artisans, and farmers. The streets of Rome were a canvas of diversity, with people from different corners of the then-known world, bringing with them a mosaic of cultures, languages, and customs. Amidst this vibrant society were the traditions that held Rome together. The reverence for the gods, the spectacle of the gladiatorial games, and the celebration of triumphs, where victorious generals paraded through the streets. But not everything was glory and grandeur. Political corruption, social inequality, and the occasional food shortage reminded the Romans that their city, like any other, had its share of challenges. Before Augustus, Rome was a republic teetering on the edge of transformation, filled with stories of triumphs and failures, riches and poverty, peace and war. It's a chapter of history that set the stage for the empire that would reshape the world. If you find these tales of ancient Rome as fascinating as I do, don't forget to subscribe for more insights into the past. In the bustling, history-rich streets of ancient Rome, a baby boy was born in 63 BC who would one day reshape the Roman world. This child, Gaius Octavius Thurinus, whom we now know as Augustus, the first Roman emperor, entered the world in an era of political turmoil and social change. Imagine, if you will, the scene of his birth, a modest house, not a palace, in the heart of Rome, the air filled with the hopes and fears of his family. Augustus was born into a family of considerable status but not one of the top echelons of Roman society. His father, also named Gaius Octavius, was a governor and senator, a man of respect but not of royal lineage. His mother, Asia, was a niece of the great Julius Caesar, a connection that would later prove pivotal in Augustus' rise to power. His early years were marked by the usual education of a Roman boy of his class, learning to read, write, and understand the principles of Roman law and governance. But his life took a dramatic turn when his father passed away suddenly when he was just four years old. This event thrust his family into a new reality, where his mother's lineage became his guiding star. As a teenager, Augustus witnessed the tumultuous political landscape of Rome, marked by the rivalry between Julius Caesar and Pompey. It was a time of alliances and betrayals, of armies and oratory. Augustus, though still young, was preparing for a role that history had yet to reveal to him. As the dust settled from the epic rivalry between Julius Caesar and Pompey, a new chapter began in the life of young Augustus, then simply known as Gaius Octavius. Rome, a city at the heart of an empire, was once again pulsating with power struggles and political intrigue. In this setting, our young protagonist, just 18 years old, found himself at the center of a historical whirlwind following the assassination of his great-uncle and adoptive father, Julius Caesar, in 44 BC. The news of Caesar's death was a bolt from the blue for young Octavius, who was studying in Apollonia at the time with his friend Agrippa. We can only imagine the shock and determination he felt as he decided to return to Rome. Upon arrival, he discovered that Caesar had posthumously adopted him as his son and heir. This was not just a family matter, it was a political bombshell. With this inheritance, Octavius gained not only wealth but also a formidable political name. He took the name Gaius Julius Caesar Octavianus, but we know him simply as Octavian. Now picture a young man, barely out of his teens, navigating the treacherous waters of Roman politics. He formed an uneasy alliance with Mark Antony and Marcus Emilius Lepidus, known as the Second Triumvirate. Their immediate goal? To avenge Caesar's death. This led to the brutal battles of Philippi in 42 BC, where Caesar's assassins, Brutus and Cassius, met their end. It was a bloody introduction to power for Octavian, marking him as a force to be reckoned with. 
But power in Rome was never simple. The alliance with Antony and Lepidus soon soured. Octavian, shrewd and politically astute, outmaneuvered Lepidus and turned his sights on Antony, who was entangled both politically and romantically with the Egyptian queen Cleopatra. This rivalry culminated in the naval battle of Actium in 31 BC, where Octavian's forces decisively defeated Antony and Cleopatra, leading to their eventual suicides. In the remarkable rise of Augustus, few figures played as pivotal a role as Marcus Vipsanius Agrippa, a name that echoes through history as not just a friend, but a cornerstone in Augustus' path to power. Their friendship began in their youth, likely fostered during their studies in Apollonia where they prepared for leadership roles in the Roman state. Agrippa was more than a friend. He was Augustus' right-hand man, a skilled general, and a brilliant strategist. He played a crucial role in some of the most critical battles that defined the early part of Augustus' career. It was Agrippa who masterminded the victory at the Battle of Actium, which allowed Augustus to be placed at the pinnacle of Roman power. Did you know that despite his power, Augustus was known for his relatively modest lifestyle. This trait, contrasting with the opulence often associated with Roman emperors, makes his story even more fascinating. Following his triumph at Actium, Augustus, the master of the Roman world, embarked on a journey of transformation that would forever change the face of Rome. One of Augustus' first moves was to restore the appearance of the Roman Republic, though he held the real power as the first Roman emperor. He cleverly presented himself as the princeps or first citizen, rather than a monarch, which helped him gain public favor. It was a dance of power and perception, a political balancing act that he played with finesse. He reorganized the military, established a police and firefighting service, and embarked on a massive building program that gave Rome a facelift. Marble buildings began to replace older ones, leading to his famous quote, I found Rome a city of bricks and left it a city of marble. Augustus' personal life was as eventful as his public one. He married three times, with his third wife, Livia Drusilla, playing a significant role in his life and reign. She was not just a wife but a confidant and advisor, exerting considerable influence in political matters, a rarity for women in ancient Rome. But it wasn't all smooth sailing. Augustus faced family tragedies and scandals. His daughter, Julia, whom he married to Agrippa, was exiled due to her scandalous behavior, a personal blow for Augustus, who had promoted family values as part of his moral reforms. Augustus was so concerned with public morality that he introduced laws promoting marriage and penalizing adultery. This was part of his broader vision to restore the traditional Roman values that he believed were the foundation of a strong society. Augustus' reign marked the beginning of a period known as the Pax Romana or Roman Peace, a time of relative peace and stability across the empire that lasted for over two centuries. It was an era of monumental change, with Augustus at the helm, steering Rome into a new age. As Augustus' reign continued, the Roman Empire entered a golden age of peace and prosperity with its influence extending across three continents. One of the most significant events during this period was the expansion of the empire's boundaries. Augustus' generals, following his strategic vision, extended Rome's reach into regions that were once beyond its grasp. The empire spread its wings across Europe into lands that are now part of Spain, Germany, and the Balkans. It's like watching a master chess player with Augustus moving his pieces across the vast board of the ancient world, consolidating and securing Rome's position. Augustus was not just a conqueror, he was also a great administrator. He established a network of roads that crisscrossed the empire, famously saying, all roads lead to Rome. These roads were not just routes for armies, they were the arteries of trade, culture, and communication that bound the empire together. In Rome itself, Augustus continued his ambitious building program, adorning the city with temples, forums, and monuments. The Arapaces, or Altar of Peace, is a stunning example, celebrating the peace and prosperity brought by his reign. It was not merely a monument, it was a message in marble, a testament to his achievements. Augustus was also a patron of the arts, fostering a cultural renaissance that saw the flourishing of literature, architecture, and the arts. Poets like Virgil, Horace, and Ovid produced works that remain classics to this day. 
It was as if Augustus was not just building an empire of land and people, but an empire of the mind and spirit. Augustus was also deeply superstitious. He reportedly took omens very seriously and even wrote a book on the interpretation of dreams. This humanizes the emperor, showing that despite his power, he shared the common fears and beliefs of his time. As the sun began to set on Augustus' long and eventful reign, the emperor, now an old man, could look back on a life that had reshaped the Roman world. Augustus' later years were tinged with personal sorrow and political challenges. He faced the deaths of many close to him, including his trusted friend Agrippa and his chosen heirs, Gaius and Lucius Caesar. These losses weighed heavily on him, casting shadows on his final days. In AD 14, at the age of 75, Augustus' health began to decline. His final days were spent in Nola, the same place where his father had died. According to historical accounts, his last words were to his wife, Livia, saying, Live mindful of our wedded life. And to those around him, he asked, Have I played the part well? Then applaud as I exit. These words, if true, reflect a man who saw his life like a play, with himself in the starring role. It's a poignant moment, imagining the most powerful man in the world seeking approval one last time. Augustus' death marked the end of an era. Rome mourned its first emperor, a man who had been a constant presence in their lives for over four decades. His body was returned to Rome and given a state funeral, an event that would have been a grand and solemn spectacle. He was deified, a practice that would become commonplace for his successors, and his mausoleum became a revered site. The years that followed saw the continuation of the Julio-Claudian dynasty, with Tiberius, his stepson, succeeding him. This transition marked the beginning of a new chapter in the Roman Empire's history, one that would see its fair share of triumphs and turbulence. The life of Augustus, from his humble beginnings as Octavius to his reign as Rome's first emperor, is a story of ambition, power, and glory. His imprint on the annals of history is profound and everlasting, from the era of unparalleled peace known as the Pax Romana to the rich cultural and monumental heritage he bequeathed, a legacy that continues to inspire awe and admiration through the ages.